Hey everyone, Fast Eddie here. So this video is going to be about the two most important tips for low speed turning. So number one, as you can see, if you come on over, so the first most important thing that I recommend is your vision. And then number two is your clutch. So whenever I go meet up with people or they send me pictures of video of them practicing either the Moto Jitsu drills or just doing U-turns or whatever they're doing, these are the top two tips I give to people that, are, that people are just messing up. So two most important things. There's a lot of other things you could do, but I think these are the two most important to master and nail down before you start doing anything else. So by vision, this is what I mean. Turning your head, like your actual head, and then even facing your upper body towards the direction you're going. So just turning your eyeballs is not turning your head. So I want you to envision, you take your eyeballs out, right? You glue one to your chin and you glue one to the center of your chest and your eyes don't move. So think you're like an owl or something, right? So you need to turn your whole entire upper body and your chin in the direction you're going. So this is what I'm talking about. So a lot of people, I see them trying to do a right U-turn, they're going like this, right? I like, you need to turn your head door. And they're like, well, I am turning my head. So I take a picture of them and they're like this, right? That's not turning your head. Your head is facing forward. So point your chin. So if your eyeball is on your chin and you're going like this, well, your chin is pointing down. That's also not helpful at anything. So you wanna turn your head and point your chin in the direction you wanna go. But if you're on the handlebars like this, no matter what type of bike you're on, and your chin's trying to go way over there, it can't really go too far because your shoulders are still facing forward. So remember, you have an eyeball on your chin and an eyeball on your chest. You wanna turn both your eyes in the direction you're going. And how you do that, if you have to move your lower body around, your legs up down a little bit, that's fine. But get your chin and your chest turn in the direction you're going. That's what I mean by vision. Actually turning your head along with your shoulders to point your chest and your chin in the direction you're going. And the same is actually true for faster speed turns. Lower speed turn, this works, faster speed turns. If you're going 80 miles per hour on a big right-handed sweeper turn at the racetrack, you also want to point your chin in the direction you're going and rotate your shoulders to point your chest in the direction you're going. So same thing, vision is the same. So that's what I mean by that. Come on back over. Now clutch. So the first thing I have right here, like my buddy Chris, he has a Kawasaki Z650 and he could do pretty much all the Moto Jitsu drills, um, the low speed stuff, and he doesn't even use the clutch. So do you have to use the clutch for low speed turning? Of course not. If you look at my buddy Alex, who has the channel Lexco Moto Gymkhana, he actually does Moto Gymkhana stuff and they don't even use the clutch. It's a different style of riding. But I don't know anybody who doesn't use the clutch when they're at a gas station or actually out on the public roads riding because it's not too practical. That's a whole different environment and different skill set. So I recommend using the clutch because one disadvantage my buddy Chris has because he does not use the clutch is he can't go slow. He, he can't control the bike going very slowly unless he pulls in the clutch. So he can't make as tight of turns because he's... So I recommend using it because you have to use it anyways when you're out in the real world. So with the clutch... This is what I mean by the clutch. So if this is your hand on the clutch, right? And this is what I mean. So the little two brackets right here, mm, millimeters. You find the point where the bike begins to go and then you pull it back in. So there's no power, power. Right before someone drops their bike, if I see someone tip the bike over during low speed maneuvers, I go up to them, we put the bike up and you're okay, everything's good. I ask them, what was the last thing you did right before the bike fell? And nine out of 10 times they say, I pulled in the clutch. When you pull in the clutch and the bike's leaned over like this, there's no more power to the rear wheel and it's probably gonna fall over. Unless you have a really light bike and you're strong, you can put your foot down and kind of lift it back up. But most of the time it's gonna fall. It happened to me a bunch of times. So to master your clutch, you pull the clutch in, you start to take off, say you're doing a left low speed turn, right? You get to the point where you feel like it's gonna fall and you ease out the clutch a couple millimeters, not fully all the way out, and the clutch is never fully all the way in. It's just right there in the friction zone, in that tiny little space where it's power, no power. If you ever feel like the bike wants to fall, the thing to do is ease out the clutch a tiny bit. Not drop the clutch, ease out the clutch a tiny bit. And it's just a fine manipulation of your left hand playing with the clutch. I have a video an entire playlist about low speed control and I have a GoPro attached to my mirror looking at my hand and you can see my hand only doing this for all low speed control. It's just very slow movements. So when I watch people do low speed maneuvers, I see their hand is pulled all the way in and they release the clutch completely and the bike gets extremely jerky going back and forth because they're doing this versus just doing this much movement. So that's why this is so very important. 
Now, if you put your foot down, okay, it's natural to put your foot down because most people get freaked the hell out if they think their bike's gonna fall and who wants their bike to fall over? Nobody. So they put their foot down, they stop, they hit the brakes, and like, okay, man, that was scary. So just keep in mind, if you're starting to do white belt or blue belt and you put your foot down, that's perfectly fine. It's natural to do that. But the goal is you get to the point where your foot never comes down. You don't ever want to put your foot down and be able to do figure eights, really tight turns, whatever else. But it's a, pro it's a progress to go up to it. So what I recommend to do that is to start thinking about a thought experiment. So first, it's natural to put your foot down. So if you do, that's fine. Right before you put your foot down, however, if you start to look internally and think about why you did that, it's probably because you pulled the clutch too far in and the bike felt like it was going to fall and you put your foot down. If instead you put your foot down, you would have eased out the clutch a little bit, the bike would have stood right back up and you would not need to put your foot down. So you want to purposely put yourself in that situation to get the feeling like the bike is going to fall to make yourself do the correct technique of easing out the clutch a little bit to master that technique and the feeling. So you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Most people avoid that feeling like the bike's gonna fall like the plague and they never put themselves in that situation. And guess what? They will never be better at low speed turning. They're always gonna hit a plateau. But if you wanna be really good at low speed turns and do all kinds of trick cool maneuvers, you have to understand and make yourself go in that position. The bike may tip over, you put on some crash bars, pick it back up, you're good. If you're going two miles per hour, you're not gonna get hurt. But if you think their foot's gonna go down, ease out the clutch. And sometimes I tell people for a thought experiment, okay, it's natural to put your foot down, try to minimize as much as possible, and then it gets to the point where I tell people, I'm like, look, your foot is not going down anymore. Go and do blue belt weave or the circle or the parking space drill, whatever you're doing, and I'm gonna duct tape your feet to the peg. There is no more putting your foot down. You have to make yourself, you have to you overcome your physical need to wanna to put your foot down and get freaked out and make yourself rely on the clutch. And once you do that and you realize the technique works, oh my gosh, Low speed maneuvers become dramatically easier because you know the technique will work and you start to build confidence in that. Because right now you probably don't have any confidence in the clutch and your technique is just, just a barely, just barely anything, right? So obviously do not go duct tape your feet to the pegs. You're an idiot if you do that. But it's just a thought experiment. Like th that is not an option. The option is the technique ease out the clutch. So what's the benefit of doing all this low speed stuff? So you gain confidence in yourself and you gain confidence with your bike. You know what your bike can do, how much it can lean, if it starts to scrape a foot peg, whatever you're doing, and you have confidence. Why is it important to practice in a big parking lot that's empty? Why do you need to gain confidence with your bike at lower speeds? How is that beneficial to faster speed? People ask me this all the time. Well, just think about a normal ride. You're turning at a stoplight, you're at a stop sign, you have to turn the handlebars, look where you're going, ease out the clutch slowly and take off. But if someone blows a stop slide, you have to be able to stop. So you have to be comfortable with your bike in practical situations. And low speed turning helps you in that dramatically, plus a million other things it's beneficial for. If you're at a gas station, this pump is broken. You didn't realize it had a little red thing on it or whatever. And you have to make a U-turn and go to the other one. And you don't want to look like an idiot and do an Austin Powers 40 point turn, right? You just want to make a U-turn and go back into it. If you actually have to do a U-turn, you're in a shopping area, you're in a parking lot doing something. It's just mastering your bike. Show me someone that's really good at low speed turning, they're probably good at faster speed turns because if you could do a bunch of low speed turns very quickly, that might be 15 turns in 20 seconds. Well, how easy it is gonna be to do a one turn on an off ramp? All you have to do is worry about one turn. I just did 30 for a half hour straight just practicing low speed drills. It's very beneficial. And plus you got the cool points, right? And that's the most important thing, you gotta look cool. <laughs> So the thing is about it, how do you get better at this stuff? So you have to practice. Watching this video or my entire playlist or any video I have will not make you one second better at doing U-turns on your bike if you only watch videos. You have to go out and practice this stuff. So I recommend every time you go for a ride, 10 minutes out of the hour or however long you do it, 10 minutes out of your entire ride, spend practicing. If you wanna do it first, like I know someone that emailed me, like, oh, I have a, a street, um, a closed down school right across the street from where I live. Every day I leave my driveway, I go into that parking lot, I do some low speed white belt drills, I do the parking space drills, I try to do blue, I get warmed up, I warm my bike up, warm myself up, warm the tires up, and I gain a little confidence before I go for the ride. I'm like, that's awesome, man, do that every day. And the other guy, this other person emailed me, he's like, oh, I have a gas station that has a big open area right by my house. So on the way back home from the ride, I pull in there, do a couple drills, trying to get better at my U-turns and everything else before I pull the bike back into the driveway. So just 10 minutes, Every time you ride can be very beneficial. If you ride 20 days a week or 20 days a month, just 10 minutes every day, that's a lot of time practicing. If you do anything for 10 minutes a day, you're gonna be good at it, right? So if you only ride once a week, 
and he's still only practicing, and he's still putting this 10 minutes every time you ride, that's still way more than someone else not doing it, right? And for way more information and visuals and demonstrations, and you could actually see me doing this stuff, I have a whole playlist on my channel, low speed turning, I don't know what it's called, maybe low speed turning tips or whatever else. And I want you to definitely look at, I have a playlist, it's called Highlight. If you just type in Highlight Reel, Moto Jitsu, you'll see me riding, I think, 17 different bikes in one three minute long video of me doing low speed turning on a Goldwing, on a sport bike, on a Harley, on any type of bike you can imagine, because the bike doesn't matter. If you master your vision and master the clutch, it does not matter what bike you're on. So you don't have to say, oh, I have a big old this bike, I have a this bike. Even if you have an automatic bike, like a scooter or an Africa Twin with no clutch whatsoever, okay, well, that's just one less thing to worry about. Worry about your vision, and now it's just all subtle, subtle throttle control. And of course, I talked about in the other video about how to do U-turn counterbalancing. That can come into play and it may help you out. I recommend trying that out. And that's simply if the bike is leaning one way, you just get your upper body to the other side so it balances it out. But some people I try telling that too and it makes no sense to them and it doesn't help them. Now they're too worried about their body position and they forget about vision and clutch. So even if you don't use the clutch and you worry about body position, that might make sense to you. So there's a very, there's a hundred different ways to get to the goal of be able to do whatever you wanna do. And, but I recommend vision and clutch, if you use the clutch, are the two most important things. Counterbalancing works for some. Some people, they don't even care or say it's worthless, it's pointless to even do so. That's fine, do it however you want to, but the goal is to actually try to do the drills. And if you're new to my channel, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with others. And if you want some low speed drills to do or a bunch of other cool things you could do that you could set up yourself, go to my playlist and I have a playlist called Moto Jitsu white, blue, brown, black, a whole bunch of drills that get progressively more difficult that you could set up on your own and uh, it will challenge you greatly. So I hope that made sense to everybody. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and uh, email me if you have any questions about anything or if you want to send me a video of you riding, easiest thing to do is upload it to your YouTube channel and send me the link. If you're trying to do white belt drills and you want me to give you some tips, that's fine. FastEddyMotoJitsu at gmail.com or just send me the link on the comment. So there's a couple big tips that I hope will make more sense. And plus, check out my low speed playlist. Um, there's a lot more stuff in there as well. So thanks for watching. See you guys later.